In this example, we're going to again find the interval of convergence. And this one looks a little bit more complicated, but it turns out that it simplifies pretty nicely like the last one. Before we even start though, you should be able to tell that when we get our answer, the interval of convergence, it will be centered at x equals negative three. Because remember the general form for a power series involves x minus a to the k. So here when we have x plus three to the k, a must be negative three. So this interval of convergence will be centered at negative three. And we'll see that as we go through and work it out. We're gonna start just like before with the ratio test. Again, we're gonna need a sub k and a sub k plus one. A sub k is just this formula here. And I'll write it to include the x plus three to the k in the numerator. And then for k plus one, we just replace all the k values with k plus one. Then the value of p will be the limit as k goes to infinity of the second divided by the first, a sub k plus one divided by a sub k. So we'll have negative one to the k plus one times k plus one times x plus three to the k plus one divided by four to the k plus one. And then to divide by the first line, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal again. So I'm gonna multiply by four to the k over negative one to the k times k times x plus three to the k. So we have this big long fraction here, but notice that a lot of things are gonna cancel. First of all, we have the negative ones in both fractions. So you can start canceling these, but we can actually shortcut that because when we're done, we'll have a negative one left somewhere. However, these absolute values will do away with the negative one. So it turns out that those just disappear completely after both canceling and applying the absolute value. So we can kind of drop those off altogether. Then the k plus one on the top and the k on the bottom, those don't really cancel. So we're just left with k plus one on the top and k on the bottom. Then as far as the fours go, we have four to the k on the top, four to the k plus one on the bottom. So there's one more four in the denominator than there is in the numerator. So when we start canceling and we cancel all the fours that we can, there will simply be one left in the denominator. And then lastly, in a similar way, the x plus threes start to cancel, and since there's one more in the numerator than in the denominator, we'll simply be left with one in the numerator when we're done. So all of this simplifies down quite nicely to something like this. And then, like we did last time, we noticed that only the parts that involve k are relevant to the limit, so we can factor out the x plus three and then evaluate this limit separately. Again, we can keep the absolute values on this second part as well, but because k is always zero or greater, that will be positive, so it doesn't really change much. But it doesn't hurt to include them. So all we need to do is evaluate this limit here. Again, notice the powers of k in the numerator and denominator are equal. So the limit is simply the ratio of leading coefficients here, which is one fourth. So if you need to review that from Calc 1 or pre-calc, doing these limits with rational expressions like this, feel free, but that comes out to one fourth. So what we wind up with is that one fourth times the absolute value of x plus three needs to be less than one. And again, this comes from the ratio test it needs to be less than one in order for it to converge. So that's our conclusion at the end of running the ratio test. And now we just need to interpret what this means. In other words, we need to find the x values that satisfy this inequality. The easiest way I have to do it again, 
first we'll multiply both sides by four to get rid of that fraction. So x plus three, the absolute value, needs to be less than four. And then again, I'll interpret this as x minus negative three means the distance between x and negative three. So we already know by thinking about it ahead of time that this power series is centered at negative three and this just confirms it for us that that absolute value of x plus three is the same as the absolute value of x minus negative three and again the absolute value of a difference is the distance between those two values. So when you read this you can interpret it to say the distance between x and negative three has to be less than four. So from negative three x can go down four units or it can go up four units. If we picture this here's negative three if we go down four units we get to negative seven if we go up four units we get to positive one so that's our interval of convergence we know that x is going to be between negative seven and one but as always we need to double check to find out what's happening at these two endpoints we know it converges between them we know it diverges outside that interval we just don't know what happens at the endpoints themselves based on the ratio test. The ratio test is inconclusive at those points. So we have to test those separately. So when x equals negative seven or when x equals one, we just take our original power series and replace x with negative seven or with one. So we have negative one to the k times k over four to the k times x plus three to the power of k. So when x is negative seven, negative seven plus three is negative four. And then when x equals one, one plus three equals positive four. So these two are almost identical other than the negative sign on the left. So it turns out a lot simplifies here. If you notice on the left, we have negative four to the k, which we could split up as negative one to the k times four to the k. And that's gonna cancel with the negative one to the k and four to the k that are already there. Specifically, it cancels with the four to the k. And then if you have negative one to the k times negative one to the k, it will always be positive one, no matter what k is. So those all cancel. And what we wind up with is simply the series k, which pretty clearly diverges. If nothing else, you can tell this by the divergence test. As k goes to infinity, that expression does not go to zero, pretty obviously. So when x equals negative seven, it diverges. And then on the right side, you can again cancel the four to the k. Here we wind up with something very similar. We just have negative one to the k times k. And if you apply the alternating series test, the first thing you check is what happens to the limit as k goes to infinity of the non-alternating part. And since that doesn't go to zero, this one also diverges in a similar way. It also fails the divergence test. So the interval of convergence does not include either endpoint so therefore the interval of convergence is simply the interval from negative seven to one exclusive of either one. Or you could say this in inequality notation. So there's our interval of convergence. And again, it's centered at negative three, just like we expected from the very beginning.